this is the rush with my boys, Brogan Roback, Dustin Creel, Darian Terrell. Um, our first official in-person interview. Oh, this and is the we, first one? First official in-person. They're mostly virtual, which is one. fast. They've been all virtual because, you know, it's been in season, but it wouldn't be right if I didn't have my two brothers here, Sailor Lewan, Will Compton from Bustin' with the Boys. I mean, we've already started the conversation, you know, having a little back and forth here, talking about our rookie year. Um, but I kind of want to pivot a little bit forward. You know, we're talking about the punt dilemma where he claims he came in and relieved me of my duties at right guard on punt. Um, but I want to talk about year three when we made the playoffs and the legend of playoff Willie. I kind of want to let, <laughs> let you talk to our audience and just give them a breakdown of kind of when it started and, you know, where it ended up. Your audience is, is Raider fans, right? I mean, everybody. Raider fans, NFL fans. We're tapping into a bunch we're of guys. We're tapping in, you know, everywhere. That year, year nine, um, Rich... I was like, I was prepared to play. I was kind of like, man, you know, am I going to get a uh, shot this year? Am I not? And then Thanksgiving kind of happened. I remember Rich and I, we went back and forth. And he's like, uh, you know, happy Thanksgiving, motherfucker. Like, you know, you know how he is. Like, you're a prick. Love yeah, you. 100%. And uh, he calls. He FaceTimes me like the next week. And I'm just taking a morning, too. So I answer thinking we're just going to fuck around again. Because I sent him a video after Thanksgiving like, hey, you know, you need whatever spot you need on the team. You need some janitorial services. Your boy's ready to go. <laughs> yeah. And so I think we're just messing around. I answer. I'm like, Visaggio, what's up? What's up, coach? And uh, he's like, what are you doing? And I was like, uh, oh, just, just taking a shit. What's up? He's like, can you cover a punt? I said, yeah, I can, I can cover a punt. And he's like, no, don't fuck with me. Can you cover a punt? I was like, if you need me to cover a punt, I will cover a punt for you. And he was like, uh, what do you, you need three games to get accredited season. Yeah, he's like, he's like I, will, I will make that happen without telling you ahead of time I'll make that happen. Like, I'm going to stand on the table. I'm going to do whatever I can to get you your accredited season. So didn't have to work out. Fly in to Vegas, reunite with That's the boys, just crazy. reunite with the fellas. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, man, like what was the first, what was the, oh shit. So the first game was the Kansas City Chiefs. <laughs> yeah. We go out, yeah. who was it? Uh, who brought us up on the logo? Oh, you know, you know. Defensive side. Yannick, right? Oh, yeah. Yannick's like standing oh, yeah. out there in the middle of the logo. The one to throw him under the bus, and I'm thinking, yeah. Oh, shit, yeah, let's go. Yeah, let's go break it down their logo, stomp at the logo, whatever. And we get our asses whooped. You know, I'm standing on the side like, man, just, just let me in while I probably help out a little bit. <laughs> but we get whooped. Molly Wop, murdered. And, it, and the, the worst part about it was that we were already by the tunnel. We, warm, we finished our warm up, we're in the end zone, and then he ran all the way out on his own. I was like, Max, come on. I'm like, yeah, so I just I had to, I had nothing I had to have his back. Yeah, so I just start running. Everyone starts running. Yeah, it was bad. But we, we get can, our ass we whooped afterwards. Yeah. It's us on the logo. The bad. score being posted. We just the worst. It was bad. Speaking of team guy, you just hit on it. Um, Max, first one to show some love. Followed you guys. Loved the barstool shit that you guys were doing. That being said, we're fresh in the game. Was there any doubt early on for you to getting into the podcast world? Like you wouldn't be successful. You, would you be good at hosting? I've been around you a few times. You're witty as fuck, so no doubt that you'd be good. You're a fucking beast. But was there doubt early on that the boys might not be able to be great at this? I'm oh, just curious. Yeah. When we first started, like, it really was, Will was looking at it as a transition to have, like, to find that backup and find different avenues. And because I was where I was at signing my deal, I was like, yeah, this will just be fun to do. Like, hopefully it works out. If it doesn't, whatever. So we had, we had completely different mindsets. But when it came time to, like, finally have the cameras turn on, finally have a microphone on, and you're like, all right, I have to now essentially entertain a non-existent audience, hoping to God somebody like tunes into this thing. Like, there was so much doubt. It was, there was so much like, can we get guests? How do we do it during the football season? Because for me, and I credit, uh, this is a big credit to you, Max, like having the, uh, the ability to block out the noise and win, loss, good game, bad game, sit there in front of a camera and be like, all right, I'm gonna do this episode and do that. That is like a bravery that I didn't have because I was so worried about, you know, you give up a sack and luckily 2018 when we played with it didn't, but like uh, you give up a sack or you like have, you have a bad game. Like you're like, Hey, now I have to go sit in this camera and be like, Hey, welcome to bus with the boys. Let's talk about how you wipe your ass when you shit like some dumb shit. And it's like, how is that going to be perceived? So there was a whole bunch of like doubt insecurity and all of it going into it. It's going to sound like, like uh, we're tooting our own horn when we say this, but at that point, like, McAfee had his show, but he was done playing. Like, J.J. Redick 
kind of balanced playing basketball and had his podcast, but there wasn't really any podcasts that were like actively doing it. So there was like that that nervousness of like, you know, when you walk in the locker room or you walk in after a loss <laughs> yeah. and you got a podcast like for the boys, like yeah. shit like that. And like, yeah, the coach, like Rabel would come in and put you, put us up in the team meeting. Like, that, are, we, are we telling game plans over here, boys? Like, what are we like yeah. putting it out there? Was he like, actually pissed or was he just giving you guys a hard time? It in was, Rabe's, Rabe you never know what's, if it's if he's pissed or, or not pissed. Right. But like, very first interview with Delaney though, it, we hit a, uh, like a national headline, like player almost dies from an IV. Yeah, oh, and I came in the training room and the Delaney Titans were said. like, yo, what the fuck, dude? Are you, are you seriously like throwing us under the bus like that? I was like, dude, it's all good, he lived. Yeah. Like, what are we, ta- like, what are we talking it's, it's about? It's a happy ending. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, and so like, there was that, and then obviously you go in the building, and either like some guys you get along with better than others, and the dudes yeah. you don't get along with, are they like kind of hating on it? Like, what's everybody kind of saying behind your back? Yeah. So there was always, what always was, something. What was that vibe like when you come into the team room where the boys loving the show, like inside the locker room where they're like, dude, we love the pod, uh, we're tuning in, or was it silent? So I wasn't, I wasn't on a team, I wasn't on the Titans. So that year was when I was with the Saints for a cup of coffee before I got injured. Injury settlement, was on the couch for a while, and then I went to Oakland. But while I was recovering, like, that was an unfortunate year for the pod to be started up because that was the PED year. Yeah. And then we were yeah. we were kicking in then. If you guys think back to it, it's actually a great time to start. Like what a headline. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but yeah, yeah. by the way, I but thought the drug t- test because oh, you subscribe to the show. The Titans started two and four before they went on that run. But they started two and four, so I'm sitting there every Sunday seeing the Titans lose another game, and I'm just thinking, God damn it. Like, I'm like, you know, should we even release a podcast? <laughs> yeah, bro, for real. They, yeah, bro, it just wasn't the best mix. And then, fortunately, like, going to Oakland, like, hearing that from Max and, like, just being in a completely new city environment that they just didn't even – it didn't even fucking matter. Like, it, you're just in a new place. You're kind of like, okay, there's stuff outside that bubble that, like, thank God I'm not in that, like the boy is right now. Yeah. But, yeah, it was kind of a rocky first year of just, like, doubt mentally. Yeah, yeah and it took – it was like, uh, like Will, obviously the mindset he was in of trying to make this thing as big as possible early – and then having a at tailgates, yeah, a business partner, <laughs> tailgates, a, a co-host, <laughs> yeah, for real. They Pre-gaming were pre-gaming the Titans, and then about they, they were tailgating. Raiders, Raiders I would drive by yeah. before the game, like honk my horn, like wave real quick, and I'm like, ah, I get, to, and like uh, even that gave me anxiety, like fuck, maybe you're doing too much again. Here we go. Right. Taylor's trying to be the center of attention of everything as I'm going to the locker room, <laughs> but like for Will to like balance that and kind of fight through it, knowing that like mentally I'm like I don't know if we should do this or that because the, the season did start so terrible for all of us, man. But once we got through that season, really when Vrabel came on the show, is like was finally that cosign of being like, all right, they're essentially supporting us by coming on the show. Like, we, you feel a little bit better about that. And then as you go farther and farther, like it really took for me uh, probably two years ago is when I was really like, all right, I'm gonna dive into this thing and really like stop caring so much about how people are perceiving me and my work ethic and all that. Cause I was a guy that I hated posting my workouts. I didn't want to be that dude. Like I wanted to like suffer in silence type of guy. And then like, I want everybody to think, this is just a guy that goes to Preds games, chugs beers off catfish, parties all the time, and then being crazy shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause at the end of like seasons yeah. or sometimes when we'd like recap stuff here, like, yeah, I almost quit a couple different times. I'm just like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel that. Whose idea was it in the beginning to start bussing? Um, and like, how did you choose each other? If, if I didn't ask that, oh, I love God that. chose how us. Did you, yeah, God, you yeah. Choose each other. God chose you. <laughs> yeah, I love that. God chose us no, I had wanted to do a podcast and like, you know, I was super nervous about it, but I, there was a couple teammates, Logan Ryan, I think Kevin Byard and Derek Morgan was like, hey, well, you should have a pod. And I'm kind of thinking like, okay, maybe I'll build up the courage to have a podcast. But I was talking with Taylor and I was like, hey man, would you want to do a podcast? He's like, yeah, you know, I'd be down. Like, when are you going to do it? Like, off season, stuff like that. I did a radio show. And, and then as I'm driving back, he's like, hey, man, I'm down to do the podcast. And this was like toward the end of the year. And so after the season came to a close, you know, I'm starting to be like, you know, hey, we got to start looking for a production team. Here's how we can have it look on the internet. Like, the podcast just that we were inspired by that we had in common when I got to the Raiders. Yeah. Like, Fired on the Kid, yeah. Chris D'Elia, Rogan, Ben Greenfield. 100%. And how they communicated on the internet was kind of like, okay, this could be kind of our style, like, you know, make it a little unique to us. At the time, I wanted to call it the Den Podcast. Taylor always said working title, (laughs) thankfully. And uh, then as the season came to a close, Taylor was like, hey, I'm going to go train. 
I'm going to go train in Arizona or I'm going to go train in California for yeah. eight weeks. We, no, we, weeks. it was so. the day after, it was, either, yeah, it was the day after we played the Colts and it was a win and get in. And whoever won that game was going to be the seventh seed in the playoffs. We, we got blown the fuck out. It was terrible. Oh, uh, it was yeah. kind of close. I mean, I it think was like 33 or 33. Jayon Brown had, uh, he had that pick, that pick that six. That was the first Robert quarter. Cousins. And then it got bad. Oh, shit. Yeah. That's just head trauma, though. Yeah. You good. Yeah, you'll yeah, yeah. be all right. Um, and then the next day, so the next day we're like banged up at a Chinese, like a Chinese restaurant. Yeah. Kind of just talking about it. I'm like, all right, I'll do the podcast. Four days later, I text him and I'm like, hey, I'm going to Carlsbad for two months. I'm going to go train. And so I leave the train. Yeah. And Will hits me up like halfway through. He's like, hey, if you want to do this, we have to start like really putting it in production and figuring out like yeah. all this stuff. So when I came back, like uh, I would say like mid-March is when we really hit the ground running. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's when we found the bus. Yeah. Yeah. The bus was, we were at, and so in Nashville, there's this like warehouse called Wedgwood Houston. And we were working with this production company. We don't work with them anymore. But when we first started, we were like, hey, do we do a studio? Like, how do we set ourselves apart? And we get to, uh, we have a meeting with them. Will shows up on time and they show Will the photo of uh, this bus. And, and Will goes like, hey, I don't, I don't mean, I don't know about having a bus, but when Taylor sees you, I love it. Now I come in rolling ball of butcher knives. And I'm like, that thing's fucking awesome. Like. That's what we're going to do, blah, blah, blah. And if it doesn't work, I'll put 10 grand into it. And if it doesn't work out, dude, then I'll just put it in my backyard. Because I think that bus is I think it's sick. It didn't run or nothing. I heard so, you have a compound in, in uh, Tennessee. Hers a nice it's little, a, little spot. It's well, nice spot. You, stay, you stay the night ever? Or? Have I ever stayed all night? No. It's kind of weird. Over guy. What age is it weird to yeah. sleep over at your boy's house anymore, though? I slept over at your house before. It kind of sucks that I haven't stayed all night. Make it happen. Yeah, 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 yeah. We have to make something happen. Rogan tries to stay at my house like every other week, so. <laughs> Would you? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Thank you. Home. Thank you. I would sleep in his cars, actually. That's if I was going to pick a spot. Yeah. Speaking of cars. <laughs> Speaking of cars. So, me. anywho, Max is. Yeah, you should hear this fucking story. This will be good. Yeah, get this on camera. This is good. So, yeah. yesterday morning, um, Max is getting some work in at the house because he can't go to the facility because he's letting the Chiefs use his locker. Crazy, and his by the way. That's nuts. Which is wild. We'll get so, to that, Starbucks, yeah. Darian's like, Max says, I can only drive the Rolls Royce. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. I'm driving. So, he's like, all right, go to Starbucks. I'm pulling out of the drive through scrape the entire rim. Yeah. I know. Rookie move. I didn't mean to. Yeah. That's all that matters. Yeah. And I think it's hilarious that you're telling us with such enthusiasm. I know, yeah, right? You're telling like you're about to be a hero. Isn't that fucking insane? If you were to tell us, isn't it insane? Like this you is don't a tell, normal You don't tell like, thing. hey, I did this, and guess what? Scratched the hey, $5,000 like, Maybe car. an excuse. Yeah. Should I change my tone? You choose your tone yeah. like this. Saying that's why he said you can't drive. Yeah. That's what I fucking do. I, I already saying. told him before, and then he tried to argue with me after the fact. There's like... Well, it's fucking bullshit. Why is Darian only... I go, okay. oh, I wonder fucking why. Yeah. Because this is what just happened. This is he a walks in the house experience. like, well, bro, if your kid's getting trouble, right? You. If your like, kid, bro, get, get away if you're from getting, me. If your kids are getting babysat, right? Yes. They get in trouble. Is all the blame going on your kids or 50-50? Babysitter and the kid. Depends on the issue is. I know. Don't 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 my kids are acting up. My kids are the ones. You're driving the car. Think about this. He already answered it for himself. He's comparing like a parent to a... Taking care of a little baby. Can you back Parent, up? He's yeah. a baby. Yeah. So he's admitting he's a baby. So it just, you know. Well, it is what it is. But. And so <laughs> his first check is just getting Wow. Gotta hurt yeah, the hey, you gotta affect the pockets. Check, I literally exactly. walk in. I all you get is hydration. Yeah. That's all you get is quality hydration. I walk in there. I said, "Take the check." Literally. Man, dude, that's yeah. brutal. It's I know. insane. Yeah, Next that's... time you do something wrong, probably the best thing to say is not. It is what it is. I would go with, "Hey, man, I fucked up. I'm sorry." I hugged you. There was like, <laughs> I bro, hugged him. He hugged him and says, "Hey, come." come but you don't say. You don't say sorry. Looking for validation. He's Listen, we don't have to do a TED talk. We don't have to. I don't have to. Hey, you know what? It seems like you have a good, good parental figure right here that's going to get you where you need to go. It's my son. No, no. Yeah, it's my son. No, that's, that's okay. Incredible. Um, what else? And then the next day, we could just you know add on to the story. It was we get an Uber. It was that day. Yeah, he borrows my backpack, goes in the Uber, and what'd you forget? My laptop inside of it. Yeah. When we came from PMT, we leave PMT. Forgets his ba- my backpack and a laptop. And we almost lost everything. Crucial back items. To back. But more importantly, we're, we're still here. here. I mean, the morale could have been ruined yeah. from the jump. But we, we had a, a nice little, you know, powwow. And Is he taking it? Has he been taking accountability for it? I mean, not really, but you were gonna... I just told him. I already said what it is. I said, listen. You're getting clipped on the first check, and it is what it is. I mean, you just heard. There's I'll take no, there's no gray area. You know what I mean? It's like AP. AP said, "Come in if you're late, you're fine. There's no argument." Yeah, you so, just hurt their pockets. That's what it is. We got the rush needs to do. 
sort of value, uh, sort of like putting in implementing core values, mm. and yeah. one of them needs to be accountability. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Number, number one, number one, we need a mission. It's the top of the mountain. I thought me hugging and, and admitting right away when I walked in the door was that that you, stuff. You got to come in and just be, hey, yeah. Max, look, I fucked up. <laughs> and I understand I had to learn the hard way about this because I was very upset that you said I couldn't drive. So I really, my ego got in the way and I decided to drive. Wow. And now, we this time. now no, we're no, in a bad no, situation. No, no, no. And I need you to have some serious empathy when you see this because you are not going to be happy. Yeah. Have one of you, if you would have done that, I just had empathy for you scratching whatever car if I had a Rolls Royce. I would be like, man, well, don't worry about it, bro. I'm going to need you to fix that. I'll yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, Well, and that's the plan was to walk in and be like, I'm going to tell him that I like smashed the, the fender on it. So then when he comes outside and sees it's only the rim, he won't really care. I'm like, that's not the Start big. I'm like, that's not what you want to talk to Yeah. Look, man, I told him your car. Yeah, by the way, one fucking one was thing. Was Sharpie, wasn't it? Thought one. I was going to Sharpie was, it up. Bro. Any thoughts on that? I get out of the car, and he's like, go check it's this out. So he I get out of the car, look at the rim, and I'm like, fuck. He thinks I'm lying, so he gets out, oh, start, starts looking at it, different, and he goes, different breeds. I think I can Sharpie this. I was like, I, I don't think that's the answer. I think I can Sharpie I don't think I that's think the I answer. I think I can Sharpie it. <laughs> yeah, so, but, yeah. I was trying to make Bro, a play. We're not talking about like a Prius. No, no, no. I know. Like I, know. I, know. I was sick, but uh, you know, we got over and we pushed forward. And we're here. I mean, we're here. Yeah. So yeah, There's Taylor. Not a, lot of energy, not a lot of energy behind that comment. No, <laughs> we're no. Okay. We're here, yeah. <laughs> we're here, by the way. Um, <laughs> But Taylor, I want to ask you a question. You know, we talked about obviously our little matchup um, that we had many, many years ago. Um, but more on a football note, um, many great left tackles in the league right now. Um, besides Trent Williams, because that's the obvious answer. Everyone always says Trent Williams is the best left tackle. Who do you think right now is the best left tackle in football minus Trent Williams? That's a really good question. Yeah, I want you to break down. Full analysis. Um, when healthy, I think, uh, you know what, dude? I think Larry Tunsil's up there. Ooh. I think Larry Tunsil has uh, incredible feet. He's uh, undisciplined with the way he gets out of his stance, the, the false starts. But I think Larry Tunsil has, like, from an athletic and technical capability, like, he's very, very sound. I yeah. think his, he's got typewriter feet. He knows the uh, uh, inception point. He knows how to use his hands. He understands, like body language and when guys are going to use inside moves as opposed to outside moves. Yeah. So I, I like him. There's, there's things about his game that, like, that I took a whole lot of pride in that I think that maybe he doesn't as much, but he has, he has so much talent that I, like, uh, I can appreciate that. Yeah, I respect that. I get what you're saying, too, because there's a lot of guys I feel like once they hit a certain year in the league, especially on the O-line, like, they're playing t for this amount of seconds and then – they're yeah. done. You know what I mean? Right. And there's a lot of guys, and it's, it's just honestly, you know what I mean? Being yeah. a D lineman, I watch everybody. Um, and you see, like, once they hit, like, year seven, year eight, there's, like, a clock in their head. Like, all right, I'm going for three seconds, and then I'm shutting it off. So I, I definitely feel that. I mean, Tunsil, I agree. Tunsil, I played him before my rookie year as well, and he mm -hmm. was he was legit. Did you but, him? No, I didn't. No, no, we yeah, didn't. Do we only? Yes. Oh, we didn't. We <laughs> matched, no. Yes. no, we matched up a couple of times, but yeah, he's he's the real deal. But there's like, I mean, there's like, I think Ronnie Stanley's good. He's, uh, I think he is a lot of help with uh, Lamar Jackson. Yeah. I think he's a mobile quarterback. You know how it is with coordinated rushes. Yeah. You have guys that are so mobile, you want to keep them in the pocket and kind of condense 100%. the pocket as they come. Yeah. But I think he's another guy that's like a technician. He's very like calm in his set. He moves moves very well. I I just I truly. From a tackle standpoint, I love Lane Johnson as well. He's not a left tackle. Yeah. I think Lane is, um, he's got the athletic ability, but he's got that grit as well. Yeah. His technique isn't as clean as like Lamy Tunsil's in my mind. He's more of a clamper, yeah. but he's got great feet and he's got a great anchor. Yeah. And it did do the capability to like play through injury. Like I think he tore his groin during yeah. the Super Bowl last year. Like dudes with that kind of grit and that kind of fortitude mm -hmm. to be able to go in, like the best ability is durability. Yeah. Like that's a dude that I, I like appreciate as well. I respect that. Yeah. I love playing Lane Johnson. We played, we had a hell of a matchup. Um, it's funny, you know, you, you see tackles nowadays, the game is evolving, changing. Um, obviously people think it's more of a, you know, it is more of a passing game nowadays, but I feel like if you can't run the ball, you're never going to win the NFL regardless. But what's your thoughts on like, the whole the offensive tackle jumping the snap count ordeal this year. You know, it started with Juwan Taylor mm -hmm. first game of the season. It was like everybody was talking about it. And then every week you're seeing more and more flags. What's your thoughts on that? Because it really wasn't. I feel like 
it just kind of became a thing. Yeah, recently. I think that's like that becomes like you had a, you had that in your bag. Yeah, that was definitely a big yeah. piece of my bag. Is like getting out getting out of this, uh, my stance. Bakhtiar. But yours was more time. It was timed correctly. I feel like it's yeah. gotten more egregious. You know right. what I mean? It's, but it's I would, taken. Yeah. For me personally, like, trying yeah. to figure out that like kind of like smaller craft inside, like outside of like in the play, but like before the play, getting out of that stance. Saying. It was important to me so much that like I would get with Ben Jones, who our center was. Ben is a guy that you know. I played with him for seven years. And yeah. so when you have the ability to play with somebody for seven years, like you learn them and when they're going to snap the ball, even when Ben was late on his time, you could feel, feel those types of things. So I would sit with him and go through his, like, um, his silent counts or when he snaps the ball and kind of learn. Because like a lot of quarterbacks in their progression of their cadence, like some guys will snap the ball at set hut. Some guys will snap the ball bleeding into that blue 80 set hut. Yeah. And so Ben was the guy when it would bleed into that, that 80 point where it goes right from that word to the number yeah. is when he would start triggering the ball. So I knew for me, when I would hear that, there's no set hut anymore. I'm yeah. going on that, on that bleed off. And so I had a, a very big advantage in, in that way. But it's a thing that needs to be utilized more is getting out of your stance yeah. where if you get off the field and you go on social media and you see, hey, this guy's offsides yeah. or jumping the snap every single play, like that yeah. to me is a compliment. No, for and sure. And that's like using the rules in your advantage and giving you that like, okay, like I'm, I'm kind of playing this game within the game a little bit. But yeah. guys, you need to, if you're going to take things like that, you have to be super diligent because a penalty is bullshit. I would do this yeah. thing on third down where if we had like a, uh, a hard count, yeah. I would put my hand, I would make like a move noise, it. and I would move my hand I like knew that. It, yeah. Yeah. And that was so, always like, Rabel would smart. kiss that every yeah. once in a while, and he'd be like, hey, be smart. it's great, because I would, I would get us like five yards a game, but he's like, but if that bites you in the ass, like that's on you. Like, yeah. I'm not going to let you have a free one. Mm -hmm. That's one of those things. So you kind of got to, yeah. there's all those kind of things to mess with guys and change your stance and all that, like kind of like play that chess game before like the ball snapped. No, for sure. I mean, that, it goes hand in hand. You get off is everything. Yeah. I mean, it makes your life a lot easier if you're getting out the ball. For me, if I'm beating dudes off the snap every time, it's like you, they have one option. It's basically clamp and try to anchor because I'm already on them like this. So that makes total sense. Yeah, you flip your hips too, and yeah. now all of a sudden that inside move, you can spin right back inside. So like, 100%. if you don't get off the snap, if you get beat off the snap, it is a massive panic. No, it is like, no holy doubt. shit, dude. And if you're able to get out, you're able to find your area, find the intersection point, and it's like you just the the percentage of winning is so much higher. So you much just higher. feel so much better about all that, dude. Well, no, did, no. did you have any hand twitching things going on in punt team like that? Any yeah, strategic? I would, try, I would try and draw guys off sides with some some subtle movements. Hell of a drag hand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like you're I, a heel guy, kind of wiggle the heel a little bit. I always right? just hated that they want they, they always wanted us to punch just because my arms are shorter. So <laughs> in my world, I need to feel, I need to be able to allow them into my body a little bit so I can get a little shock and shed. Okay. More of a shed guy. So you're you know like more I mean? of an unorthodox shed kind of approach. Yeah. Kind of yeah. I got to, you know, you got to play head games out there. Okay. I like that. <laughs> Darian, do you have any questions for the boy? Yeah. Um, I know that you guys just talked about you got in the game early with the podcast, right? What is it that you've seen from all the player-led podcasts from, you know, that have happened over the last four or five years? The ones that have made them successful and the ones that kind of have fizzled out. What's the thing that makes the best ones sustainable? You could make enemies right now. You don't have to, you don't have to use names. Yeah. I mean, it's, a, it's a good yeah, question. I mean, it's a new wave of media, right? You get the yeah, players, yeah. you get to take control and have a voice instead of hearing everybody talk about things that aren't inside the locker room. So it's a, yeah. it's a huge deal. It's a big value. Yeah. I feel like the biggest thing for like players doing pods is consistency. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what I would talk to you about. Yeah. Like before you made decisions on doing the podcast and everything else, it's like doing it. If you're going to do it, do it all year round and be consistent. If you're going to do it once a week, do it once a week. That's what, uh, when we were building out the podcast, I got on the phone with McAfee and he was like, we were only talking about doing it up until the season and not during the season. Right. Yeah. And Pat was like, you need to treat every, your audience, the internet like your friends so you have to show up every week in front of them yeah. he's like so if you're going to do it once a week i would i would recommend doing it in the season and so why well, i feel like stuff just fizzles out is just like you know players do it like in the season and talk about whether it's their game or whatever it is yeah. and then when it's the off season there's not a whole lot to talk about yeah, so guys right. will stop or they just don't keep up with it. They so I feel like, the, weeks yeah, they're, yeah. They're and I know that that's like a that's like a lane, right? Like I know a lot of media companies will, you know, look at like star players and be like, hey, we'll build out a podcast around yeah. this. Yeah. Everybody's not going to be new heights, right? You yeah. know what I mean? Like that. 
Yeah, but yeah, busting. But I'm saying like oh. New Heights is seasonal, but it's yeah. uh like you know that's like Jason and Travis. They, just they don't get together in the off season like in person. They have, but it doesn't go. It doesn't go all year round. Okay. Oh, they've got a, they've got a unique yeah. set of juice with the way that like I mean last yeah. year they both played in the Super Bowl. Travis, obviously, in his offseason, Danny Taylor Swift hosting SNL. Yeah. Jason has had, like, a, a crazy amount of, like, you know, world sexiest man or, you know. Of course. All that stuff. Like, they're, yeah. they're hitting levels to where that mold of what Pat was telling, telling Will is not necessarily a, a needed thing because they're going to get the views no matter what. Yeah. 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 Like, the thing, that I, the thing that I think makes us successful is, like, eventually – like obviously chemistry is is a big thing and if you're able to go back and forth and like have fun and understand and implement segments implement things that when the viewer is watching you they can get excited about if we were doing a tear talk or a shadow no free shadow and we have these little cheeky things that are like kind of fun where you know like shadow no free shout it's one of our segments where it's like what's a underrated thing that you just you just love, and it could be as simple as that morning too, or like having a cup of coffee. Or you you leave your water bottle in your in your car when it's when cold out, and then yeah, yeah, you get it the next morning. morning. Yeah, and it's, like, like, it's ready it's, to it's go. Money. And have like having yeah, having that where like the key. viewer is a part of it, and then the guys that I think do the best is being like just authentically themselves. We had like we had Big Cat on the episode just dropped today, yeah. Yeah. and he was kind of he's like one of the OG like godfathers of podcasts, especially yeah. in the sports yeah. world. Yeah. And he, he brings a good point. Like the viewer is not dumb. Like they, they understand like if things are going well between you and the co-host, if they're not, like yeah. if you're trying to fake things and, yeah, and all that. And it. so it's just like taking a risk and trying new things and pivoting. Like mm-hmm. that's, that's really all it turns into. You guys have a big advantage having the four of you to where it's not like you, you guys all get to shoulder, shoulder the burden of like asking right. people questions and how we're going to transition. And if you fuck up, like, this isn't ESPN. This isn't NFL yeah. Network. We were like, okay, we're uniform. We're going to hit this guy. There's a production guy in your ear yeah. saying, all right, Max, we're going to you next with a question. Yeah. And then you're rattling. Like, you're able to be like, hey, I got nothing right now. You got, you got <laughs> yeah. And it's like, and then it becomes a joke. Like, hey, we're terrible at this job. But I, thank God you guys tuned in. It's amazing. Yeah. And so it's no just kind of, it's having fun with the audience. And that's, that's something that Will does a really good job with, especially on Twitter. Is constantly being like yeah. making things out of it over and over. Yeah, over. yeah. Like, you're one of, one of one on Twitter. Twitter legend, yeah, man. for real. It's my favorite yeah. Twitter. I swear to God, it's a it's a thing you can look at and appreciate because it's a talented thing. So yeah. I know you hate the compliments right now. Um, you know, kind of. I'm just sitting here, kind of peeped your shoes. You know, I don't know if they're Nebraska red, the ends for Nebraska. Yeah, these are the Husker 550s. The Husker 550s. Yeah, I could tell. Um, I just kind of wanted to get into this on camera because I know behind the scenes, me and you have had our battles, you know, maybe a little bit in the public yeah. eye on Twitter. Um, I wish people But I, I'm glad I have board. some fellow Eastern Michigan, uh, you know, Eagles with me to have this argument. But Taylor, I think you're going to enjoy this. But I mean, who do you think is better, Nebraska or EMU? Come if on, we man. played, who's winning? Can I say something without disrespecting Who's winning? Nebraska or you? Sure. I Go feel like try. Eastern yeah, now, sure. we can beat bottom barrel Big Ten teams. We've proven to do it. I don't Four not saying you guys are necessarily there, but Purdue, Illinois. I think we have a chance. Illinois, yeah. We beat Illinois. We drug Illinois. What about Purdue? Did you win? Be, drug Purdue. Wow. Who else is it? Rutgers? I think 31 to 14. Mm. Yeah, uh, they call that a Drake. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They do. yeah. you know we beat bottom of the barrel Six Big Ten teams. That's what we do. So, do you think you guys would actually beat us? Like, if money on the line, everything, you seriously think Nebraska is about? There's no doubt in my mind. Better program. I think if you were going to get us at any point, it would have probably been Four what, maybe years. two years ago. Wouldn't have been three years ago. The greatest three winning <laughs> team of all time. So y'all won three games. That was, yeah, we, yeah, we've had a year where we've only won three games. We've look, I truly we've think had games we only look, won one. Look, if, if, Nebra- if, if Nebraska EMU played next year, Nebraska would beat y'all. That's what great. was y'all's record this year? Not even a real fan. We were six and five, six, if you were wondering. Five and six? Five, five and seven. Six? Five and five seven. seven? Fuck. So, I mean. But you guys have a couple. Well, there, there's you got to make the ball. I just a, truly. What was your guys' record? We are six and six. We, I mean, we went to Montgomery, pre, Alabama. Pre-NIL. Huge bowl. That was game. a down year. Ventures 38 sure. bowl. You gotta do pre but That's what I'm saying. Like, it's not like you're on the rise. What do you mean we're not? We went to our first bowl game 30 years, and we've been to bowl games ever since. Ever since. Like, isn't six, it called? Seven years isn't it called the Max Crosby Stadium now? <laughs> Max Crosby Field at Ryan Nearson Stadium. Get it right. Would you pay yeah. like a million dollars? Like, a million if dollars I had, if that. we had to get Nebraska change, like that would be. 
Millions of dollars. Probably billions. Bro. Probably billions. What does that matter, though? I'm it just means you're Aaron not field. trending that up if they're like, oh, okay, we'll name the field Max Crosby Field. Well, so the crazy thing for some change in your it, pocket. You're, you're Fans good. don't win games. Fans don't win games. Was, you guys are dedicated. I love your fan base. They're selling. I didn't out say the thing nothing about Max, our you fans. No, that, because bro. it's the same. That's what you're saying. You're saying you're not trending up because we're whatever. It would be a million dollars to you get know, such a field. You're trying to get situated in your couch right now. No, I'm just being out. real because what you're saying is basically like, okay, a million dollars well, makes it way more, you know, does a lot well, more. What's been your best school. record recently? I mean, nine and three last year, won a bowl game. Not last year. Last year. Or the year before. Yeah, okay, so so you went from nine and three to six and six. Yeah. Congrats, man. We so went, we went, what we, did y'all do? We went three and nine. Three, we went three and nine to five, five and seven. seven. <laughs> Where's that trend? That's not so that's it's, it's terrible. Up. Yeah, we're trending so up. Won eight and we games, got a new head coach. We eight got coach games in two now. years. What like does it's that a, mean? It's a different era. He came there, and what did y'all do? You missed the bowl game again. Yeah, by but one game, bro. If you turn off interceptions yeah. and injuries, yeah. Yeah. five to seven good. with the worst <laughs> yeah. turnover margin in the country. So that and makes you all a bad hey, team. You bro. said fans don't you win games. We don't turn the ball over. Mm. Max, you said fans don't win games. You won six and six. Imagine What's if we don't turn fan, it over. You said fans don't win games. Fans don't win games. You heard it first, Raider Nation. Max probably doesn't care if you come to the football game. He doesn't care if you go to a league. Isn't that insane? You guys, his noise doesn't mean shit to Max Crosby. No, no. I mean. It's funny because he's a Michigan guy. It had nothing to do with the conversation, but that's not you true. Can you add that in you there. thought you, you were going to team up because hey, hey. you brought the little Giants yes. with you? You guys are a sister school. Do you post your fans in Taylor Lewan jerseys on a daily basis? Yes or no? Do we what? Say that again. Post your fans wearing your jersey on Instagram story. I go out daily. every single week to Whole Foods in Green Hills and I set up a tent and I sign jerseys. Every week. Every week. You're aligned. Every week, man. We're right. the same four people come every single week. How long and how many people? Yeah. I'll tell you I mean, what, dude. We go the Raider the fans already know in Nashville. It's not <laughs> yeah, I'm in the city with it. I love my fans. But this is your city. Yeah, this is your Don't city. Don't let them de- deflect it. As a University <laughs> of Michigan alum. <laughs> and having let them go. Eastern <laughs> Michigan being our sister school. Sister. I can honestly, you guys are five minutes away from us. Don't say sister. We, but we would tear your as bars a, up harder than you guys. Are, listen, you're right. pivoting. This is like no, you, let this go. Is let like you go. with the, the Rolls Royce. <laughs> yeah. I, can, I can confidently say that Nebraska would, would take down oh, Eastern Michigan. God. And it might be a close game, at least respect it. In the first quarter, yeah. yeah. Why do you think Nebraska would win? Though? Like, we went to Purdue the year they beat Ohio State. They're 8 and 4. We went to Purdue and beat them on yeah, the field. Yeah, not good, bro. What do you mean? Okay, but they're you better mean, than I'm Nebraska. Nebraska. Me too. Who is? Yeah, that too. Ohio State is better than Nebraska, yeah, correct? Yeah, they are. They are they okay, are, they are. so Nebraska's not even in that tier. They're like in the Illinois Purdue tier. But you're tier. talking about a rock paper scissors situation. Well, like, like just this Purdue tier. Ohio State what are you searching? And you I'm beat Purdue doesn't mean up. you guys beat Ohio <laughs> State. <laughs> Never said we beat Ohio State, but I'm saying we you beat. You beat Purdue the year we beat. that Purdue beat Ohio State. Yes. And so it's not like paper covers rock. I've never like, said it's not, that. It's like the one I never said that. that. I just use that as an example. But they were an eight and four team. Like they're not even eight and fourteen. They're not even bowl eligible. Bro, oh, so man, why would we not? Man. Minnesota. You know Minnesota beat us on a game-winning field goal and they stormed the field. You lost twenty-five to six to Minnesota. Colorado stormed the field too. You lost to Central Michigan. You're not even the second best team in Michigan. We fight for the Michigan Mac Trophy. We won the Michigan Mac Trophy last year. University of Michigan, Michigan. They're not even the third best team. No, they're not. It's, it's not true. I don't remember Michigan the Trophy best. two years ago. Oh, yeah, Michigan State. I'm not even thinking about them. Yeah. You're thinking about I'd say we're okay, second best. You lost to Western Michigan. You guys are the worst team in Michigan, in the state of Michigan. <laughs> not no, I didn't beat Michigan State. I didn't beat Michigan State this year. Thank you. Oh, y'all beat Michigan State? No, oh, he's, he's saying we would. Yeah, they beat Michigan State. Yes. Wow. We beat Nebraska, we beat State, we beat Illinois, we beat Rutgers. This is such a stupid conversation. That's what we did. That's what we did. Is this the kind of show you're running here? Huh? This is the kind of show No, I just kind of want to add this on here just to, you know. Western Michigan, Central Michigan, Lost of Michigan. Yeah. I'll pivot. Um, <laughs> Let him pivot. Creel, hold up. Creel, you need to ask a question. Sure. Yeah, so just going back to, uh, you know, you guys are obviously the OGs in the sports, um, you know, world with mm-hmm. this. But uh, what was the one episode that really, like, elevated between you guys were like, holy fuck, man. When you got done, you hit, like, end. You're like, we're going to go, like, the next level. Was it a guest? Was it a certain episode? What was it you guys saw between that? Mike Vrabel, yeah, right? Yeah, Mike Vrabel. Yeah, Vrabel. No doubt. Yeah. Like, he cut his dick off for the Super Bowl. That was it. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. yeah. yeah I do And then they that. went to the AFC Championship. So it was Boom. like, it, like, came back around. Wait, Mike, we went to the AFC Championship in the week, like, a couple of days before we played Kansas City. They're like, hey, would you actually put your piece up? I was like, ah, oh, no, it was a joke. And we lost. So Mike Rabel is the reason why we can go to It's a big piece. Wow. Jalen Ramsey as well, because he, he talked about how he DM he talked about how he DM receivers' girlfriends yeah. and tell him about it on the field in college. That's awesome. So Jalen was another one. I think yeah, from Jalen, I remember the 
like the meme where it's in a bar and then you had him on the screen. Yeah. See? Yeah. Because somebody was like, Oh, uh, I was at a press conference. He goes, Bust with the boys? And then you go nuts or whatever. Yeah. Shout out to Bust with the boys, man. That was legendary. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. Legendary. How far along was that in your guys' journey to get started? Like, you had Ray Ball and then you had. Yeah, it had to be like top. I July? think Ray, Ray Ball was like the first 10 episodes. Wow. Yeah, but I'm saying, yeah, that was around July. Because it was before the season started. Yeah, before the season. But soon after you guys started, like. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's when like, Barstool DM'd us. Right. Okay. After we Damn. went viral, or we were going viral like a couple times off the Jalen Ramsey, Mike yeah. Vrabel. Oh, yeah. That's dope. Were, were you guys like on your own solo before Barstool? Like, was it yeah. in house? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're still essentially in house. Like, the partnership with Barstool, like we still get to operate out of Nashville. Like our, our team is busting with the boys. Yep. So we're still the same, like, you know, podcast. We just partnered. We've been partnering with Barstool for, I don't know, like four five, years. four or five years, years now. Yeah. Good for you guys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, well, I think we were like, what, 20 episodes in when we signed with Barstool. Because they, they approached us pretty early. Yeah. After the couple of things. And then we met with them during camp. Yeah, training camp. It was during on one of your off days. And then uh, the Super Bowl was in Miami. So whatever year, I think that was 20. That was 2019. 2019. Yeah, 2019. my rookie year. And yeah. they, uh, that's when we like, we signed with them. See, we're still far behind. We don't have any fact checkers yet. Yeah. yeah. On the screen. Right, right, it's right. Okay. right. We're, we're going to get February we're of 2020 is when <coughs> we inked with Barstool. Barstool. Okay. So yeah, that off season. That's yeah. dope. That makes sense. So speaking of that interview of Vrabel, what's your thoughts on the whole Vrabel not getting a head coaching job. Like, what do you think the reason is? Because I've seen, you know, people rumor that he's a monster, so people are intimidated by him and all type of crazy shit coming out. You what know, you that's think? ridiculous. No, it's yeah. ridiculous, but, you know, you hear all the shit. Like, what do you think's the reason why he didn't get a head coaching job? I think he, he can kind of pick his next shot. I don't feel like he's in a spot where he has to be urgent about what he does next. Like, just because he was a – he was a he's obviously a very credible, good head coach based on his resume. For sure. Doesn't mean he just needs to hurry up and jump into a next head coaching job. Like, you know, people joke about being a fire head coach is like the best job in America because you need the buyout that comes with it and everything else. So yeah. it's not like he has to be rushed into his next decision. Yeah. Like, I'm sure he's got a couple options that he can look at. Yeah. Maybe he chills for a year. Like, he's got, yeah. he's got Carter in college. Like, maybe he watches yeah. him play baseball. Mm -hmm. Like – you know, Would I, he ever go back to college ball, do you think, in your opinion? No. No way. More coaches yeah. are leaving college to come to the It's And it's also yeah. like Vrabel. Unless Vrabel was fickle. Like, was just in like, like something in D.C., yeah. I don't think so. Because they were know. like, that was like best, they're like each other's best man. I know, but so. I've actually, I've asked Vrabel if he'd do college, and he's like, no. no I, I wouldn't. Because of recruiting? Because of recruiting, all the bullshit that yeah. goes with it, class checking, all, yeah, all that stuff. Like, you got to babysit a lot. Vrabel's a very big no-nonsense guy. Like, he wants to coach his team. He wants to do it on his terms. So I can see why teams would be turned off to Mike. But yeah. the whole report of him being like too much of an alpha male. So. Yeah. I was going to say, because Dan Campbell. Yeah. 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 Dan Campbell's a large motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. Who's the beta Campbell? owner that's intimidated by Ray? No, for I mean, sure. The alleged. Uh, yeah. 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 I said, who's the beta <laughs> owner intimidated no by No question. That person needs to get fired. I mean, <laughs> needs well, help. Your, your, GM, your team's going to suck for a long time. We saw Diana Rossini yesterday, who allegedly was the person that reported that, and ML Football reported it. She was like, that's not what I said at all. Like, there was a guy that said, like, He's an intimidating press, uh, presence yeah. when you're interviewing him. And that's really all they that's said. All they like, said. That was it. And then it came out as like, she's reporting that he's too intimidating to get a job. To get a job right? is yeah. bullshit. What I thought was going to happen is I thought McCarthy uh, from the Cowboys was going to get fired. Yeah. Yeah. And then I thought that would be the perfect landing spot. For for him or Bill, yeah. right? I so thought him or yeah. Bill out the gate. Because that's the thing. Like, I love Rabel. We talk. Like, he'll FaceTime me in his office, say what's up, like, day one. I, and I know his son well, too. And I, I agree with you, Will. Like, I think the thing for him... Is like he wants if he's gonna go somewhere he wants to be. This is how we're doing it. Mm -hmm. I'm run. I'm a run shit. You know what I mean? And that's right. that's his personality. Now he's earned that. It's worked. So yeah, I think honestly next year when the next coaching you know carousel comes around he'll probably just pick his best option. Yeah, because I mean you know how it is. Like some head coaches they want some more control in the roster. Like yeah. you just don't see eye to eye in some of that stuff. Then yeah. that just right. is what it is. It's not because he's not a great head coach. Yeah. No, I totally agree. Um, yeah. Bro, I'll transition again. Yeah. yeah. Um, you guys had a big day media day yesterday. Clips everywhere of you guys screaming your questions. Is loud in there? Dog, it's a yeah. war in there. It looks like <laughs> boxing out. Bro, yeah. there's like little women out there screaming over you, and you're kind of like getting body bagged by them because you don't want to like scream hard. Yeah. Right. But Will, like, was <laughs> he got the Travis one in while I was trying to get – who was I trying Mahomes. to get? Mahomes. Yeah. Yeah, I was trying to get him on the uh, In-N-Out or Whataburger comment. And once the <laughs> yelling thing happened, I was like, oh, this is so much easier. And he wants to be, but there's multiple times. I think with uh, 
Shanahan, I'd sit there like eight times just to ask a question and like raise my hand and you feel like a damn idiot. Every Cutting people time. off. Like, yeah. Oh, shit. Okay, all right. Yeah. yeah. But it's a, it was a, I don't think we expected to go that well. It, yeah. was, it was like a lot of fun. And we, Energy was good in there. Yeah, because Radio Row, we did Radio Row last year and that was kind of like, it wasn't like anything special. It was more yeah. like draining than anything else. So we backed out of that. You a couple that. of hits. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Not... But the, the media day thing was great because you were able to kind of go in, ask those cheeky questions and having relationships with those guys too, like Kittle. When the 49ers came back out, there was like an hour break in between. We screamed at Kittle together. And the lady that was kind of like referencing, like, like kind of like facilitating all the questions was like, excuse me, we don't, we don't scream like that. And George was like, mm, they can scream. George, <laughs> George. He gets We're not going to scream. And stuff. Like, yeah, yeah. George going. is the man. So it's like, it was yeah. very cool to like see these dudes and like, obviously they've been on the show a whole bunch of times, they yeah. friends and stuff yeah. like that. So it was, it was awesome. That's dope. Taylor, like, do you miss being, you know, being in a football realm compared to like now you're obviously retired for the time being? Um, is it like different? Do you miss like the locker room vibes? And is it like, you know, obviously Will was, you know, I'm not going to, you're kind of in and out towards the end. You know what I mean? Once the, so, yeah, the yeah. show started. 10.2? Who knows at this point? I don't know. 10 point. Yeah. That's what I heard it you say. 10.2. But yeah, like, do you miss It'll that shit? It'll be for life. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Do, do you I miss, miss it? that shit? Like, like is it, uh, dog, I, mean, I miss, I miss like this, like all of us sitting around having a conversation, mm-hmm. like, yeah like jabbing each other about this game or that game like that's the kind of stuff that like i think i like will always miss but like there's a, a band-aid with that with bussin like uh what i miss is being a dominant football player i mm-hmm. miss being a guy that was like all right in the game you leave me alone and i can be one-on-one no matter how stressful that was or having that kind of responsibility that's the stuff that i miss yeah i can't i i can't play at that level anymore like I, my knee is destroyed so yeah. I'm like, I feel very fulfilled with football. I feel like there's obviously like, unless it ends with a jacket on you and you're yeah. a first foul hall of famer, like it's not the story you want, but yeah. to be able to achieve the things I did, I'm, I'm super grateful for that. Like it was really cool. And the bus has a lot to do with this. It's like, there's probably three or four times this year where I sat on my couch and watched a game and I was like, man, it'd be sick to be out there with the boys, like grinding it all out. Yeah, of course. But then for every, like for all four of those times, all of the other times it was like, hey, this is so sick that we're going to Chicago, then right from there traveling to LSU mm-hmm. and getting to experience this. Because you don't get to do that as a player. You no. have no fucking free time. Yeah, go, go, go like see a Zero. game and experience things and like get to meet these people and establish these relationships where it's yeah. like you're thrusted into this new world and it's like it's just so it's just fun. Dude. It's yeah. just such a it's such a good time and it's one of those things that I got super lucky about because I was a guy that never had plan B. There was never like, I was playing till the wheels fell off. Yeah. And I'll, I, you literally like, we talk about this sometimes, like when you play football, at points in your life you think, I'll play football, then I'll die. Of like, course. No, or like, die on the field. There's, there's no after, after football. No better honor. Yeah, yeah. there's no <laughs> better honor. Yeah, <laughs> better honor. You walk out the field, like right? we've Stand lost. on the grenade. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> being able to like, kind of like stumble into a second profession that is successful is like, I mean, it's dumb luck is what it is. That's, it's awesome. Has the success, this is, I guess for both, because we won't forget about you. You had a legendary career too. You get stuck yeah, yeah, I, I, I don't, you know, I don't want yeah. to be shadowed with, with uh, Taylor, but has the success from Boston made it easier to retire, walk away from the game? You know, like, cause now you know what you're doing. You guys have built oh, pretty much an empire yeah. at this rate. We, we've, I mean, we've had a lot of conversations today about that. Yeah. But there, I mean, people figuring out like transitioning outside of football it's it's, it's got to be like whether it's high school college or nfl it's like one of the hardest things to do yeah. it's just like you have, your identity has been taken away from you i hate yeah. when people say football's not my identity i played for yeah. a cup of tea right played two years and, and that's it and everyone's like it's not your cup it's not your identity i'm like get fucked it kind of it kind of is yeah yeah, yeah it's just what you 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 know i mean yeah you you spend your entire life chasing the dream of the NFL. Of and you get to do it when you're there and when you're young, you know, you think it's going to be forever. Yep. Then as you're like getting in thick, you might just miss the playoffs. You might make the playoffs and be like, oh, we'll be back next year. And you just don't, it's hard to quantify. Like you're always chasing the next thing. And then when it suddenly ends and for the majority of guys, it ends without them even knowing. Mm-hmm. And when that happens and you're trying to figure out your next thing, like we got, we've gotten to experience you know, the highest of highs being an NFL player. And so when that is gone, it's like, yeah, as awesome of a life as it is, your program to figure out what that next kind of like roller coaster high is. And fortunately with Bussin, it's like, 
I take pride. I love like it's like people know me more for podcasting and bussing than playing yeah. football, which is sick to me now. Yeah. Uh, but at one point in time, it's like you wanted to be, you know, if I could get the the poor man's Luke Keekly sure. like yeah. label, you're just like yeah. that's who you want to chase. Like the moment you get to start, you're like, okay, can I chase this? Can I chase that? You're like you're just fully immersed and wrapped up in it. So being able to separate and transition into bussing and doing all the stuff that we do now. It's uh man it, yeah it's been very we we we're very uh fortunate that we've had we've been able to create bus. You jumped yeah. the depth chart in the podcast you now you're number 1. You're the one guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Like from football to pod you're one. You're no longer sitting on a as a gunner or whatever on the I'm not a you know I didn't sit in any special teams meetings so I can't help you out in that category. <laughs> Shit, do you guys have any more questions Creel, DT? I got around. one for you. So you had a nice spout in Washington, right? Mm-hmm. And then in Vegas. The boy Cliff Kingsbury had a very short bout here in Vegas and now he's going to Washington. Did he make the right decision? And do you have any, any <laughs> words to share for the guy as he goes into Yeah, the Coach Kingsbury, man, we share a lot of, you know, history, I guess, together. Our journeys are very similar, just the opposite. Just the yeah. opposite. Just yeah. uh, I think he's going to do good in Washington. Like, yeah, he has ups and downs as a head coach in Arizona, mm-hmm. but... I mean, you know, man, like being a head coach and a coordinator is two different things. Like, I mean, McDaniels yeah. is an example. It's like he's yeah. had a couple stints as a head coach that hadn't worked out. He's known as to be a hell of a coordinator. Yeah. And sometimes that's, you know, is more the lane. Like it, mm-hmm. you can focus on calling plays, not having to mess with quarterback drama, not having to balance the, the front office and the players yeah. and the ownership and all the political shit that goes on behind closed doors. That Cliff probably had to deal with that AZ because we've all seen like reports where, whether it involves Kyler Murray or the ownership mm-hmm. and this, yeah. that, the other. Now he just gets to focus on like calling games and being an OC underneath a head coach like Dan Quinn, uh, who I think is, is a good hire based on the things that I've heard. Uh, guys that's played for him, he takes on a lot of the Pete Carroll esque culture type stuff. Mm-hmm. And he was a, a successful D coordinator with the Cowboys. So you're coming from a team where you're behind enemy lines of your rival. You know how to beat Philly because yeah. he was doing it at Dallas, mm-hmm. and now yeah. he's leading Washington and has, like, a, 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 an offensive mind like Cliff. It's just, you yeah. know, are they going to get a quarterback early? But I think he'll do good. I yeah. think he'll do awesome. I like that. I, yeah. Two more if, if you guys got time. Mm-hmm. We Whatever got we were talking about time. before, air with, oh, with the Watt brothers. Time, Let's right? head on that yeah. if we can. I yeah. missed half of it. So. Yeah, we touched on it. I mean, <laughs> off That's camera. I'll just Look at Taylor's <laughs> grin. <laughs> Wait, what we we'll just, just, here we go. Chris Paul, Lob City, you're Blake Griffin. Um, you know, I heard there's some drama with the little Watt brothers. You know, what's going on with that? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> which one do you want to start with? Let's go to the oldest. Oldest first. Yeah, oldest. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. So obviously I played JJ for uh, seven years, eight yeah. years, I don't know, uh, whenever he went to Arizona. And, yeah. um, you know, I was always very disrespectful. I was a shit talker. I was very Ooh. rude. And um, so with JJ, it wasn't like anything like totally egregious or anything like that. It, it, it got much worse with the younger brother. But with JJ... <laughs> I would always be very mouthy and I would always like talk shit to him and say he's a piece of shit white guy and you're not that special and you know stop taking steroids and all these like different <laughs> all these different things with him. Mental so, warfare. Obviously you play somebody twice a year over and over and it's the same thing. I'm, I'm sure there's a reason why JJ Watt got turned off by like by me and my yeah. personality. Yeah. And so that that's kind of just one thing. Um, 2016. Keeps digging the memory. 2016, we played we played the Steelers. We played them Thursday night football. Like Antonio Brown had that catch yeah. off his helmet in yeah. the back insane. of the end zone. Yeah. It was insane. They blew the doors off of us, and uh, it was late in the game. Um, T.J. Watt's rookie year, yeah. and this is when now T.J. Watt plays predominantly on the right side, on the left side of the defense. Now you know, at this point in his career, or at the only point in his career, he was playing on the left tackle, and so yeah. I had him the entire game. Yeah. And T.J., you know, he was finding his way in the league like he right. wasn't tj watt that we see now right. and so uh we're playing and he's you know still trying hard he's still doing his thing and we're losing real bad it's like the last four minutes of the game we're just throwing it over and over again and i'm pissed off because we're losing and the last thing we want to do is be in pass protection for when you know the game's They're teeing off. the rest of the day there's teeing off on yeah. you like, yeah. god damn and uh <laughs> he said something 
I can't remember, but I'm wa- I'm walking, and he's like scoreboard, which is a is a, that's, that's a what that's thing a by the way. They yeah. always hit you with the scoreboard. I hit the scoreboard. Like, Give me with the scoreboard. <laughs> and uh, I as I'm I love as it. I'm like turning around, he's hitting the scoreboard, ball ball. What you gonna do now? And I'm thinking, brother, you haven't even had a pressure today. But I, I I'm like walking. He's like scoreboard. I go. And I turn around and I hit, I spit and I hit him right between the eyes. Oh, oh, no. And it was, what a shot. it was 100% intentional. Oh, no. It was meant to make him upset. It was, oh, no. uh, I, bad intentions <laughs> with, my, with, with my ultimate disrespect. Dude, it was, yeah. and it was bad. And, I've done it before too, I'm not gonna lie. He goes, team. you're, he's like, you're, Same you're, team. uh, you're disrespectful, like you you shouldn't be in the game, like you are a piece of shit human being, like really going in on me. Yeah. And that was making me feel better. I was like, Good. Good. I'm Good. glad I did this. Good. I'm glad I spit in another man's face. And like after Ultimate the game, disrespect. Uh, so after the bad. game, him and him and Bud Dupree, who actually ended up playing for the Titans a couple of years yeah. ago, yeah. uh, they were like, after the game, game's over. And to me, it's like games, practices, fights, all that. And there. You in the locker room, it's yeah. all good. Yeah. Obviously, spitting goes much farther than yeah, Much farther. Oh. But to me, I'm like, it's over. Hey, good game. He's like, no, fuck you. Like, we will be. Bud Dupree's like, we will be outside your bus waiting for you. We're going to beat your ass. Damn. And I was like, I'll fucking be there. I think to myself, I'm going to get my fucking ass beat. Dude. I am for <laughs> sure. <laughs> get my ass beat. So fuck. I get changed. And I'm like kind of shouting as I'm like getting ready to leave the locker room. I'm like, damn, dude, I really am going to have to go out there and stand by the buses. And dude, I sat outside the buses for like 25 minutes. You were waiting. Waiting. No shows. That's a man. Just move. trying to be a tough guy. And I knew I'm going to get my ass beat here. And actually, Bud Dupree and TJ Watt walked down. They looked at me and they kept walking. And I thought, thank the Lord that they didn't come. Because <laughs> I would have had to keep this bullshit tough guy persona up for right. another hour oh, as yeah. I go to the hospital yeah. from getting curb stomped by these two guys. And so <laughs> that ends, and I truly don't think anything of it. Bud Dupree mm. comes on the team, and we like talk about it. We're like, I was like, hey, man, how about that? And he's like, yeah, that was wild, right? <laughs> so yeah, it was pretty that crazy. That was wild, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 And like, we, like, he like, actually, it's no big deal. Well, uh, I think like last year or two years ago, TJ Watt was like an option, like, do we want to get the Watt brothers on the podcast? JJ says no, TJ says no, and we're like, let's get Derek. Let's get Derek, let's get Derek, <laughs> Derek Watt. Watt. That'd yeah. be fun. And Derek turns us down, and I'm like, what the fuck? These guys think they're better than us? Like, yeah. dude, just come on the show. And uh, What's funny is Derek said yes to me in, in DMs, and then his agent was like, no. So, yeah. fuck those guys. Once Taylor came in the picture is what you're saying. Right. Yeah. yeah, and there's actually been another situation that's come up recently because of me. What happened? Uh, our oh. spring tour. I can't, I can't, I'll tell you guys after yeah, the show. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you that part after the show because that is still in the works. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. We don't want to burn that bridge. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we actually played the Steelers in 21. And after the show, I saw, after the show, after the game, I saw Derek. And I was like, man, you can come on the podcast or what? And he just looks at me and walks away. <laughs> like, what's that. the deal with these guys, man? Like, I'm really not thinking to myself. And then Super Bowl last year. <laughs> I'm talking, I just kind of like explained the story like in less detail and less enthusiasm. Like I came, I didn't come to the table like you did when you were stretching rims enthusiasm. (laughs) But I was kind of just telling the story and like Big Cat is like, you spit in his face? Like you can't do that. No, JJ Watt was going on PMT. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we were talking with, (laughs) part of my take, you Mm -hmm. had PFT and Big Cat and JJ Watt standing there. Yeah, but they didn't, I was like, yo, what's the deal with them? Like, they're having, they're having a big issue with us. Like, can you, can you talk to them? Like, yeah, we'll talk to them for sure. And then, like, we go to get food, and I get a text from Big Cat, like, you spit in his face? And I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah, I did. Yeah. And that's when I went, and I went to see JJ. And it, went to, it was going to be like this try-to-be-funny confrontation between me and JJ. And it really just turned into me, like, tucking my tail between my legs, being like, yeah, that was fucked up. Like, and he's like, yeah, you shouldn't have done that. And I was like, yeah, it's my bad. I literally made, a, like, a video <laughs> to TJ. To, and I gave it to Big Cat to show TJ, like, yeah. how to apologize. And then, like, now this year, I'm, I'm actually going to send another video to Big Cat because they have TJ on later this week, and yep. I'm going to apologize again. But So they'll probably never come on the show. <laughs> I'll probably never get a walk on the show, and it's, yeah. it's truly for good reason. Like, it, wow, I shouldn't have. I mean, imagine if I spit in your face, bro. Yeah, no, I would hate Would I be sitting line. here right now? I would be fine. You spit on the same yeah. team, Steelers. Yeah, no? I had a, yeah. Oh, I had a run in on a Pittsburgh Steeler. Yeah, yeah I spit on a Pittsburgh Steeler. I mean, 
I could break it down real quick. It's pretty simple. I mean, we had a former old lineman, you know, he's not in the league anymore, um, talking, just chirping the whole game. He's known for that. You know, he got, he's kind of past his prime at this point. But uh, we're getting into it. I'm talking my shit. He's talking his shit. They throw a little check down to Najee Harris. Boom, he's running, like, already down the sideline, taking off. I turn around and this dude's barking at me as I'm running to the ball. I fucking feel a headbutt, like from behind. Boom! I get cracked in the back of my head and it's this dude. Fucking dude has been chirping. So I looked him in the face and I was fucking ready to tee off. Like I was about to just get kicked out of the game, whatever. But I was like, I stopped myself and the only thing I could have done in that moment was spit in his fucking face. Because the ref is staring at me. Like the ref's right here looking at me. So I just, and he fucking set off. Yeah. So he comes running after me, whatever. You could, they literally had him in slow motion. They had him hawking a loogie across the field. He's trying to fight me, run through all his teammates. They kick him out of the game. And I'm like, I didn't do shit. <laughs> I didn't do shit. <laughs> yes. I, I was like, no idea. I didn't do shit. He's fucking going in. So then I hear from another teammate that uh, he's looking for me. It's been years. Supposedly he's like, that motherfucker, I'm coming for him. I'm like, shit, you're the one that started the whole fucking thing. If you wanted to do something, should have looked me face to face and did it. But he fucking headbutted me in the back of the head while I'm running away from the ball. Like, I'm like, whatever, you had your shot. And then you try to spit at me after the fact. I'm like, whatever, take your fine, take your suspension, and take your ass home. And it was what it was. <laughs> and it's been years since it. And I was like, I really don't care. I'm like, if you want to fight me, like, you know where I'm, I mean... I'm sure. in Vegas, like, if that's what you want to do, like, I mean, what are we doing? So you, but like, you've caught wind that he's still out Not, not still, like, it's old shit, and, like, we got into it, whatever, but, like, after it happened, like, weeks, <laughs> my teammates, I know him, they're like, bro, he's, like, literally, like, looking for you, whatever, like, he's gonna come to Vegas and whatever. It's been, like, three, four years since, yeah. but I'm like, I mean, it is what it is. People don't forget. It is imagine, what it is. Could you imagine how, like, the mental fortitude to still be looking for you? And he's like I mean, still yeah, to like three, four years. Later. Three, four years. He's, like he's like, in I'm retirement. I mean, <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I, I'm gonna say this. I'm not like if somebody spit in my face, bro. I would have the same reaction. I would lose all right. fucking composure. So I get it. But if you're the one starting the fight on a football field, like if that that was my only option, I'm not letting them disrespect me and do some cheap shit and then me not respond. So I just it was a little spat and he Ref fucking lost it. his mind. Took his helmet off. They had a loogie going 10 yards on, in slow motion and on the field, and they kicked him out and everything. And I'm like, I have no idea. Then they went to the league, and the league is like, the ref was like, I didn't see it. I'm like, see, told so you. So we can agree <laughs> that spitting on somebody is the ultimate disrespect. Ultimate. 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 Or now, bitch. Yeah, or now, bitch. And now we're past that. We're now, right. we've, we've agreed that it's the worst thing ever. I call you a bitch. You're we a can, no, that ain't not even spit. close. That ain't even close. Right? No. If I called you a bitch, for some reason people no. go no. on glued on the field. No. Not even spit close. Right in the spit is, if you get he spit in the eye, you that's... call me a bitch to my face right now. Right yeah. now, and I'll be care. fine. Oh. Yeah, you're a bitch, okay? Right. Yeah. Cool. Sometimes, no question. Yeah. No, you spit on somebody, like, <laughs> that's, everything's dropped. Yeah. Like, so if you spit on somebody, ultimate disrespect. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Now that we've gotten out of the way, yeah. tactically, that is... Impressive move. Yeah. Right? Like, you got a guy kicked out of a game. You threw somebody off their game. He got 15 yards penalty, ejected, suspended, yeah. fined. And the cameras didn't you not saying it's not bad. But he started, so it's not, it's not my problem. If you started, I will go all the way. Period. The see, I, that's it. I that's how I am. son gets it. Yeah. 100%. First off, this is little brother. <laughs> yes. this is Let's clarify that since it's getting Do you think he's older than me or younger than me? I gave you the keys to the test. Younger. Fuck no. Yeah, fuck you. It's my son. It's my son. Where's my C? You think you look older, Max? Are you saying I have baby face? I'm asking if uh, you yes. think you yes. look older, Max. <laughs> I think I do. What do you boys think? No. Why? I mean, you got the whole backyard baseball look going on with your yeah. backwards hat and the little flip there, the little cartoon flip. Damn. A little rush hat for us. I like that. No, I'm bigger brother, but um, <laughs> nonetheless. Uh, nonetheless. You had a big night last night, hit the tables. You got mm -hmm. Will to jump on the tables. He's yeah. now addicted. Um, addicted. <laughs> We've learned that in the game. Yeah, yeah. 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 Addicted. Bad word. Mm. Allegedly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Addicted to the process. You're freaking liar. Addicted to the process. Yeah. Addicted to the process. Yeah. Talk us through, what was the, so you won like 100K, donated at the same time. Did you donate any of your wins? No. <laughs> no? That's no. for you. Donate What's the game wins? of choice? Blackjack. Blackjack. Yeah. 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 Blackjack. The, um, 
Yeah, I got a buddy who uh, I grew up with. He's, uh, we went to high school together, awesome dude. And he lives in Cape Creek, Arizona. 5,200 people, only place in the world you're gonna find an old truck, a horse, and a Ferrari in the same parking lot. Yeah, it's, it's a very unique town. And uh, he, had, he, had, he does like, I think uh, he's an electrician. And he came up, he had some work to do at a Costco, like 45 minutes away, and he's like, hey, uh, you know, I wanna see you. And I was like, yeah, dude, just come hang out, you can stay in the room, and we're gonna do X, Y, and Z. And so he comes over and he was saying uh, how his house has a whole bunch of mold, and he's doing the renovations himself, very big like handyman cat. And like he was like doing it all for himself, and his family hasn't moved back in yet. And I like said, like, I was like, hey, tonight, if we win 100, I'll give you 30. And he said, no, and he's like the nicest, never asked for anything type of cat. Like, no, 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 please don't, blah, blah, that's all right. And uh, we, we won. I mean, there's not a whole lot to it. Like, we ended up winning 100, so. Taylor doesn't lose. Mm. Uh, don't say that. Not going to win. Not going to win. I'm going to be there in the next 30 minutes. Yeah, I'm going to be there playing in the next 30 minutes. Yeah. Tea time. And so that was cool, man. Like, we've done a lot of game. I'm sure you know Steve. Steve will do it very well. Of course. And uh, he's an extremely, extremely generous guy. And there's been a couple of times yeah. Steve and I got together and we won a credit line back for Dana. Uh, Steve was down one night. Dana and I won it back for him. And it's like that community in there is like, it's just the most uniquely generous group of people. Yeah. And you kind of like, the more you're around it, the more you're like, man, that's like a, a really cool deal. And it was, it was just a, a nice opportunity that worked out. Because yeah. you're like you're not working for anything. You're just winning something. Yeah, of course. Like, like, if I worked for something, I got a hundred dollars. I'm probably not giving Kenny thirty thousand dollars. No. But if yeah. I sit at the table for an hour and things are going really well, and I know this would be awesome for my boy, like, okay. it's no skin. I didn't do anything except for enjoy myself, right? right. Mm-hmm. And right. be able to. It's, it's just a cool deal. Really in, that right. casino, in that hotel, that, that staff is extremely Yeah, expensive. Red Rocks is unbelievable. Red Rocks, that's the uh, same place you go every time, right? Mm-hmm. That's where yeah. Dana goes every, yeah. You I mean, that's day. Dana's literally every day. Like, yeah, that's where the winners win. It's yeah. insane. But yeah, Dana, I mean, between Dana and Steve, probably the most two generous human beings I've ever been around. All time, dude. I mean, yeah, Dana, everywhere he goes, just dishing hundreds. Yeah. Everybody. And whatever store we walk into, whatever it is, he's like, yeah, he's, a, yeah, he's about his people. Steve, Steve's like that too, man. They're, yeah. they're good people. And Steve's like so uniquely himself too. Like yeah, I thought he, he was a little spectrum when I first met him, but he's really just like a new, <laughs> unique cat. Just a little like, bit, yeah. Like loves, like loves people, loves hard, and like once, like you know what it's like when you like reach any level of fame where or people want a picture with you or they want yeah. a photo, like there's some sort of defense mechanism that comes up a wall, like what do these people want from me? And I feel mm. like with Steve, that was very little, man. Like, there was obviously an easy transition playing cards together, but he is just such a giving and awesome dude. Like, I love being around the cat, man. He's, he's unreal. <laughs> What's the number one blackjack tip to give to someone right now? Ammo. Yeah. Ammo. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, That's how Dana, aggressive, yeah. aggressive, aggressive. Yeah. All in. Yeah. Yeah. If you have the ability to max bet and you can, you can take lumps for a long time, yeah. eventually the ties will turn and there'll be one good shoe to get you back. Yeah. But if, you are, if you're balling on a budget, like most of us are, it's like, just whatever you're betting, play in your head like, I can lose 10 hands in a row like knowing that I have enough ammo to make it back. Like, the ammo is the yeah, biggest thing. 100%. Because you hear some people all the time. Hang on, hang on. Balling on a budget? It's a bone on the budget, like most of us, you know. Yeah. It's like a cool thing you say, like, when you're in high school and you finally just read, like, you know, we're balling on a budget. <laughs> you don't like that saying? No, I was thinking, you know, it's just funny. It, it um, makes you chuckle internally. I like it. You know, so, you know, we're balling on a budget. Yeah, the boys are. <laughs> in some way, $5 foot lines, you're balling on a budget. Like, right balling on a budget, I, like, think about it, like, that was back in the era of, like, an one mixtape or something like yeah. that. Yeah, I thought it was in the area of, like, going to mm. Champs getting three for 20 waffle tees. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, you know the boys are doing it. No, no. Yeah. We out here making deals, we're balling yeah. on a budget. <laughs> no question. Who so, out of your crew do you feel like is the best interviewer? Best interviewer? Like, yeah. asking questions? Yeah. I mean... I feel like everybody has their own little, little he's like, <laughs> no, I feel like everybody has their own unique way of asking good questions. I mean, DT's. What your guys is, he's no. obviously not going to answer. He's just no, going to no, no, shower no. everybody. No, I'm just being real. I feel like everybody's got their own thing. I can't say one person. We're just, like we said, we're fresh in the game. If you had to write So I like Brogan. I feel like Brogan's got the most personality when it comes to that shit. Like, he's easy to talk to. That's why, I've, you know, he's my co-host. Yeah. So I feel like he might be the yeah, my little brother. But like... <laughs> The reason I wanted Brogan, me and him were day ones. Like, I, he was our quarterback in college. He was, these three were like my big brothers. I came in on my official visit. They had the football house with the cool dudes. 
and they just took me under the wing. They were like kind of cool, but no, they they took me under the wing since day one. So um, yeah, I would say Brogan. I mean, he's my co-host, so I feel like he if without him, the show wouldn't you know wouldn't be what it is and had the success. So bench start cut these three individuals right here. Ooh, nice. (laughs) Nice. Yeah, yeah, that was off the dome too. He's really tearing through us. No, I mean. We're just, 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 just dividing the team. Yeah. That's a yeah. pause. That's, yeah. That's fucked up of you. But. Okay, my bad. We don't have to do that. So. <laughs> no, it's I thought not. there's a guys clowning around right now. Yeah. Yeah. No, we're just clowning around. <laughs> yeah. Of course. At the bench, I mean, it just depends we're on. We're balling on a budget out here. That's man. right. We're balling yeah. on a budget. I mean, it just depends on what area you're looking for in life. If we're talking like strictly podcasts, okay, this is what it would be. If we're talking about like life, like, you know, friends, like strictly my podcast. boy. Strictly podcasts. I mean, you know, I mean, bro. Hey, I think Krill thinks he's getting cut. <laughs> <laughs> he just stayed in the same position. Be able to look around, Krill's like, he's like, like he's not. <laughs> I mean, you said a tweet worth of words today. Yeah. So, I, mean, I, I get, I mean. No. Do you have a mic on? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's stupid. I love it. He's stupid. <laughs> No, no, but I mean. Sick name, though. I mean, yeah. It's, it's, Sick name, though. I'm sorry, bro, again. I was sorry, bro. Again, it's tough though. I mean, me and Darian, and I'm. Who's I, turning I love their, them all. Hey, who, who, Before who, I say this, I love. I, I wouldn't. Who's change bringing for their the playbook? Ball. There's, I wouldn't there's change 31 for the other teams out there. Right. They're all bringing their playbook. You had a great game. You did at the end of the day. It's just a numbers game. That's yeah. right. Amen. Just a numbers game. There's better. There's more better. I would start Brogan, bench <laughs> DT, and cut Creel. Damn, that's tough. If you had any to. advice for me here, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. any advice for me here? <laughs> New role, right? New yeah. role. I, I will say this. Change though. cities. Hey, listen. Change I will say cities. this though. Out of respect for Creel, I know we're busting balls, shit like that. Creel fucking originally wasn't gonna be even a part of the podcast. We had me and you know, it was literally me and Brogan. We started this idea. Two years ago. Yeah, a couple years ago, me and Brogan are chopping it up. Boom, we should do it. We've always talked about it back and forth, whatever. Then we're like, fuck it. We're gonna actually like make this shit happen. We chop it up, boom, let's start making some fucking plays. Let's figure it out. How do we do this? Boom, boom, boom. So then DT comes into the fucking play because he's, you know, his buddies, they do a business business podcast. He helped them, you know, kind of run it behind the scenes. Diversity. Diversity, exactly. You know, a great friend of mine. Exactly. Rooney Rule. Rooney Rule. So stupid. Yeah. He's so stupid. Yeah, but anyway. Rooney Rule. Yeah, that's all I was thinking, dude. So dumb. <laughs> so dumb. Anyway, but yeah, DT was like, listen, bro, me and Brogan are like ADD. Me and him are kind of, we're all over the place. That's why we get along because we understand like our energy. And DT is like our big, like he's the OG at the end of the day. So we kind of, he's able to, you know, get us in the same boat. So DT's like, bro, I'll help you guys out. Mom, this is what I'll do. I'll kind of type some things out. We're thinking like he's going to give a little short like preview of what an episode will look like. Comes back with a PDF file, fucking 10 pages long. Google Doc. Google Doc, everything to a T. I'm like, bullet point, everything. I'm like, okay. Brogan calls me, yo, like, should we bring DT in, whatever? I'm like, bro, 100%. So that was it. We're like, okay, let's get DT in. And then Creel ends up coming for, I think it was, was that our first? Yeah, home opener. Creel comes in town. Obviously, one of the boys, receiver, great receiver at Eastern, great friend of us. He comes in town. We're all vibing, hanging out. He's in the background of the podcast. We start like, we're like, shit. He starts asking some good questions. Starts coming with the knowledge. Like, Creel's a behind the scenes. He'll get some weird stats. You know, obviously, he's got all different type of things he brings to the table. So I'm like, we're sitting there. We're like, bro, Creel, come join the show. So that's how it kind of all put together. So it was literally just like, it worked out. We all kind of, we obviously are all really good friends. But then, you know, it just kind of, we all, you know, got on the same page and made the shit happen. So... Any advice yeah. from you guys to us being in the podcast world, killing it? I cut, caught a clip, I think, after you guys talked to Max when he zoomed in, when you guys were on the bus. Mm-hmm. Um, and you, you talked about him, you guys had the conversation about starting a podcast. Um, and then you talk about someone coming in, would they want to keep the guys, right? Like, would the company coming in, would they want to keep Rogan? Would they want to keep the other guys? Mm-hmm. So, advice. For us, like continue <clears throat> grinding and staying and elevating in the podcast world because it is different. It's it's weird at the beginning, right? So just your guys' two cents would be dope. I think I think the first thing you know was the consistency thing. Yeah. Like if you're gonna do it at this time at this week, 
It's got to be at that time, that week, and it could be as short as you want or as long as you want. Yep. But making sure you're getting in front of people and having people be able to expect, okay, this time I'm going to go watch The Rush. Yeah. And then I would just say also, like, try as many things as possible. Like, find, like, you have no idea what works for you and what doesn't work for you until you find out. Of course. Yeah. So I, I think. I mean, it's no, fun, dude. Once you, like, start yeah. to, like, catch a roll, because at the first, like, when you're starting it off, it is, we've already talked about it so much, it's nerve-wracking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But once you, like, start to find a role, and you're like, oh, shit, maybe this is something. This could work out, or that could work out. And so we've had to do a lot of pivoting in different areas throughout the last five years. But it's been, it's, like, now it's become, like, fun. Yeah. To where you kind of understand, like, right. new guest, Will knows when I'm going to ask a question, or I know when Will's going to ask a question, and elaborating, stuff like that, and just having fun with it. Absolutely. Say less. Well, shit. They'll wrap it all up. You already know. I love you guys. My love boys for too, life. Love you too, brother. We Thank appreciate you, all the advice, all the good you. talks. Yeah, and Thank you, bro. Yeah. That's sorry, all we got this sorry, week we on The Rush. We appreciate you guys. <laughs> hey, sorry. No.